Have you ever tried that when you're working and you leave your computer turned on, someone goes into your bank account, steal all your invoices and your credit card information and upload it to a Russian server? Hey guys, welcome to Tech I Want, a 15 most important shortcuts that not many people know about for Mac. I'm Jeppe, I work at Tech I Want, I'm kind of like the janitor slash cook. But nobody really appreciates my efforts in cooking. Apple really puts a lot of effort and focus into making their products super user friendly, and that really shows in their Mac user system. Those, though Windows and Linux can be more customizable, Mac is just a pleasure to use with all the functions and shortcuts that they've included in their products. So here's the top 15 shortcuts that I think can really increase your life and make sure that you don't die young because there's a direct correlation between two, those two things. It's proven in science, I read it on Facebook, so don't counter argue me in the comments, guys. So my first favorite shortcut is quite simple, it's called Quick Look. Whenever you go to a file, just click spacebar and it shows. If you click the bottom down, it shows the next one. This is rotated as a video, and this shows a picture of mountains. When I'm on a Windows, I literally have to double click the file and then it opens a PDF Adobe Reader program and then it comes up and it's super annoying. Here I can just click and it's there. If I want to open it, I press Command O and it opens it in preview which is just amazing. That's number one, that's my favorite. Mac is super cool for people who work with multimedia. Basically using images and videos in Mac is really seamless. Often you don't even need an editing program to do some basic functions that has to do with media. For example, this video, uh, when I click my preview button, it's rotated, but if I just click Command R, it rotates it one more time. And if I keep clicking it, now I'll click it twice to rotate it back to normal. It works like that. So basically for photographers and people working with images, this next shortcut is also super important. The finder of Mac has different views. So if you click command one, it shows in one view. Command two, it's the next one. Command three is the third. But my favorite view is command four. So basically in this view, you can see all the metadata of your images and your videos, making the process of working with multimedia super seamless. So basically Mac is not only for uh, people who do multimedia, it's also for those people who need to access like the main back of the computer, like programmers, or people just like installing different things. Really easily, you can click command, shift and C, and it kind of opens like a top level page of your computer. So if you're like me and you have a lot of different tabs open, a quick way just to exclude every other tab than the one that you're looking at is to hold command option and then go down to the dock and click that program. Then you see Safari being excluded. If I want to see preview of our image, I'll click that and the image is gonna come up. It's a super nice way just to clean your whole dashboard, kind of focus on the things that you want to see. So the next shortcut is my absolute favorite for Mac. It's kind of like the super multi-tool of shortcuts. It's super simple. It's command spacebar and you can basically do anything. You can search for your file. Let's say that I want to find the file mountains and it basically shows me every file that has the keyword mountains in it. For example, this study about Greenland and some book that I have. Besides just showing you the files that you're interested in, you can also use it as a calculator. So you can say 12 plus six and it'll show you the result. You can also use it as a currency converter. For example, $100 to euros, it will show you exactly how many euros that is. This means that you don't have to go to your browser and use Google to search for all these things. You can just click command spacebar and you can pretty much do anything. And also remember to click that uh, like button and try this time to do it with your toes, not with your thumb. I heard that the YouTube algorithm kind of like can separate that. I don't know how they do it and subscribe. Because if you subscribe, you will get a lot of crazy content in your inbox from Tech I Want. The next thing is that if you click Control Command Space, you can pretty much access any emoji. You basically just have to write what it is, like sheep, and anything comes up. The next one is for the people who are doing music production or just people who are really, really careful about their sound volume. As you know, the sound goes up in basically small bars, but if you want to make it more incremental, you can hold option shift and basically your sound will go down or up depending on the button you press incrementally. So if you really need to listen to something at a very specific volume, you can use this. So basically, if you want to access preferences for basically any program, you just need to click command and comma and it shows you all the preferences. And this works for any program that's on the Mac. Super nice and you'll save tons of seconds in your life, which is great for your really busy millennial lifestyles. The next one is my second favorite because so many Windows users and users on Linux have to download some crazy, really ugly programs to do screenshots. But here on Mac, it's incredibly easy. You have two options to do a screenshot. Take one of the whole screen or select a little field that will crop out and take a screenshot from. It's so simple, you just have to click 
Command Shift 3. That's a whole screen and it appears on your desktop. And if you want to do one that you kind of like, if you like that mountain top, you click Command Shift 4, you select it out. And as soon as you let it go, it takes the screenshot. It's super easy and all those Windows boomers can just because you are the overlord using your really fast screenshot tools. The next thing that fills me with incredible boomer energy is when people have to move their cursor all the way to the turn off close button. Oh, the magic wizard has given you access to his newsletter. By the way, if you're interested in tech, you should go and subscribe to our Tech I Want newsletter. It's a weekly newsletter showing you the most important innovations of that week along with some cool tech news. Coming back to the main point, I get super stressful seeing all these boomers drag their cursor all the way to the close button when they're navigating their browsers. Basically, to navigate a browser on a Mac is super easy. Command T, it opens a new tab, Command W, it closes the same tab, Command Q, it closes the whole browser windows. These tools uh, and shortcuts might be available in Windows also and in different other browsers, but using the Mac keyboard is just so satisfying when using all these browser tools. Might be a simple one, but it's a really effective one if you don't already do it. Do you know the feeling when you're scrolling a website and you don't understand what the words are? For example, on the Tag I Want website, so you can pretty much just hover your cursor over a word, then click Command Control D, and it will open up a dictionary definition of that word. And from there, you can configure your dictionaries, open your dictionaries, or just go along as you were. Really useful tool for those who don't yet know how to read. Have you ever tried that when you're working and you leave your computer turned on, someone goes into your bank account, steal all your invoices and your credit card information and upload it to a Russian server and they participate in the pan Uruguayan tax evasion scheme from 2001? Making sure that never happens to you again. Super fast, it's three keys and it'll save your life. It's command control Q and it locks your screen. It closes the screen, password protects it and you can just walk away. And the last, the last uh, shortcut is actually not a shortcut. Sorry that I've been lying. There's this amazing thing that nobody knows about in the Mac and Apple ecosystem. There's this program called the Automator that can pretty much do a lot of different tasks for you. Let me show you how it works. So for example, I have this mountain pictures. As we can see, it's 4.8 megabytes. And I think that's kind of a lot. So I want to compress it basically 60%. I opened the automator program and I basically made, it's not a code, but it functions as a code to do different tasks for you so you can save time. So to use this, I right click, I go to quick actions and I click uh, scale 60. It basically opens automator, duplicates the image, and then I have an image right next to there that is scaled 60%. If you have a PNG and you want to make it a JPEG, I've also made an automation there. You can go to quick actions and go back and convert to JPEG. It will do the exact same thing. This is basically a thing that will save you so much time and it can it's completely unlimitedly customizable. The last thing I want to show with Automator is the video function. I can go to quick actions, click compress movie, and it compresses the movie. To use Automator is a complete different progress. I'd love to make a video about it. So if you're interested in the best Automator hacks for Mac, please write in the description, like this video and subscribe, and I will get to it. But let me just show you how the interface looks. It looks really confusing. So that's why you actually probably really need an explainer from me. Learning these shortcuts is gonna take a very short time and it will benefit you very much in the long run. If I forgot a shortcut that you thought was uh, important enough to be put into this video, please comment it down below. And if not, then I'll see you next time.